muss ja Deutsch sprechen. Äh, und jetzt gehen wir über nach Griechenland. Ähm, Griechenland ist die Situation in Europa sicherlich am zugespitztesten und zwar im klar negativen Sinne. Äh, ein Land, was unter den Vorzeichen von sozusagen Troika, IWF, EU und so weiter regiert wird, wo viele demokratische Momente oder ein Großteil ausgehebelt werden, auch unter dem Vorzeichen eines starken Elitenprojektes der Klasse in Griechenland, der oberen Klasse. Gleichzeitig gibt es selten wie sonst in Europa ein starkes politisches Projekt, was sozusagen eine ähm, Machtzugang hat und Macht repräsentiert. Janis hat gestern von einem Counter-Hegemonic Project gesprochen. Syriza ist das Counter-Hegemonic Project in, in Griechenland. Vor diesem Hintergrund der zugespitzten Lage, aber auch der sehr klaren äh, Klasse, äh, nicht, ähm, Kräfteverhältnisse da, interessiert mich Janis Perspektive auf den Status der sagen wir mal, demokratischen überhaupt Gestaltungsmöglichkeiten und dem, was da drin sozusagen als äh, Syriza als Kraft repräsentiert in Kooperation mit anderen Akteuren in Griechenland. Thank you. Um, I will speak in English uh, and I would like to warmly thank you for the invitation to be here today. Um, there's a rhetoric that says that um, democracy was invented in Greece. It is true that the notion of democracy was firstly discussed in ancient Athens. There's a problem with this kind of democracy. The democracy established in ancient Athens was a democracy accessible only by the privileged citizens of the capital city, uh, the citizens who owned the right to have a citizenship. It was a democracy exclusive for immigrant and domestic slaves and for women. In this sense, we can say that our neoliberal national governments and the EU have today a perverse admiration of this model. <laughs> so discussing about the crisis, the universal prescription of super austerity has proved not to be the means to cope with fiscal instability or the public debt problem. Austerity is the means to achieve the new European project of the neoliberal camp, what we call the Chinaization of labor relations and workers' rights, the dissolution of public services, and the most violent redistribution of wealth in favor of the big capital, that we have seen since the end of World War II. For these reasons, we believe in our analysis that this is not a confrontation or a war between nations, but it's a hardest European class war that our con the peoples of our continent have experienced since the fall of Nazism. But The neoliberals already know that they cannot achieve this Chinaization under a democratic environment. In order to achieve their aims, our national governments, together with the famous Troika, are attempting to impose the replacement of democratic rules, the violation of popular sovereignty, by a new type of what we call financial authoritarianism or, in one word, austeritarianism. This new regime is not and cannot be based on social peace because of the extremely destructive social consequences that austerity programs have. This regime attempts to achieve social tolerance through spreading out fear, terror, and blackmailing campaigns 
orchestrated by the mainstream media in our countries, through the escalation of state repression, and through the violation of national constitutions, national and European legislation, even through the violation of the existing European treaties that our political opponents have imposed in the past. The Greek people were chosen to become the first guinea pigs in this laboratory of experimentation. Greece became the first experimentation field for the elaboration of this austeritarian project. I have to tell you that the first memorandum or loan agreement for Greece was never presented and voted in the Greek parliament. It was ratified through the signatures of the prime minister, the finance minister, and the president of the republic. And our government was back then was a social democratic one. At the same time, most of the austerity measures have been approved by our parliament through emergency procedures. Because every time they use the blackmail, we don't have more time. If we don't vote them today, they will kick us out of the euro, and so on and so forth. And they were ratified with simply absolute majority while the national constitution of Greece predicts that for strategic contracts, there must be an increased majority to approve them in the parliament. What are the social consequences of this version of austeritarianism? 1.5 million of unemployed people. We are the champions. The Spanish are no more the champions. 25% of the Greek population, 25% of the Greek population, one out of the four people you see in the street, are trying to survive under the poverty line. In Athens, there's an official counting of 25,000 homeless people. 70% 70, 70 of patients have insufficient monthly income to buy their medicine. 55.4% of patients do not follow their daily treatments. At the same time, in a few days, we will face a new austerity package of 13.5 billion euro of new cuts in public spending. This means salaries, pensions, public health, public education. And through this period, austeritarian democracy means in practical numbers that we have spent a total amount of 550 million of euro, which is the cost for the recapitalization of the private banking system of Greece. The salary of a newly hired teacher, which does not exist as a term because public schools did not hire anybody this year, is 660 euro while the new minimum wage in the private sector for workers up to 25 years of age is below 400 euro. At the same time, and I finish with the numbers, there was a report two days ago that stated, and this is the aim of austeritarian democracy, that the big Greek businesses had in the last two years of the memorandums an increase by 19% of their annual profits. Today, exactly the same austeritarianism is exercised in Portugal, in Spain, Italy, but also centrally in the European Union level through the fiscal pact, through the institutionalization of the iron rule of austerity and the plans for a centralized fiscal and budget control, of course, under the present relation of forces in Europe. This strategy of fear, combined with the structural connection of neoliberal capitalism with corruption, and also combined with the integration of racist and xenophobic rhetoric in the mainstream political discourse, by the previous governments, 
has deepened the crisis of political representation and boosted the emergence of neofascism in Greece. There's a theory that the appearance of the party of the Golden Dawn, which is actually not a party but a murderous neo-Nazi gang, their appearance in the parliament would make them integrate into the parliamentary democracy model we have in Greece. The truth and the historical experience has shown that when fascism engages itself, itself with the institutions, then fascism does not adopt democratic institutional ruling, but instead the institutions adopt themselves to the fascist authoritarianism. Our, government, our, our neoliberal governments, the former and the present government coalition, showed, understood that the guinea pig, the Greek people, are starting to react. So now they are using the dangerous theory of the two extremes. On one extreme is the neo-Nazis, the other extreme is the radical left and all the people who resist in the streets. But this dangerous theory of the two extremes has led to the attachment of the Greek government and the Greek police to the fascist version of the two extremes. I have to tell you that a few days ago, anti-fascist demonstrators who were arrested were tortured in the general administration building of the Greek police in Athens with the use of tasers, electroshock guns, and, other with other, and with other forms of humiliation. These have been internationally denounced in the Guardian, and the answer of our government coalition was that they will sue the Guardian for uh, telling wide spreading of lies. Fortunately, as I told you, and I finished with this, the guinea pig, the Greek people reacted. In the last two years, we have organized about 13, 14 general strikes. I know that this is a strange number for Germany. <laughs> and last year, after the provocation by our Spanish brothers and sisters, we decided to follow their example and occupied the squares of the country transforming especially Syntagma Square, which is now an urban symbol of the social resistances in Greece, into a huge social laboratory of experimentation with new forms of public consultation, direct and indirect mixture of democracy, and the elaboration of an alternative program of the peoples coming from the peoples and not imposed by an avant-garde political party. All the activists of Syriza were in the squares and still are. But we didn't go there with our party flags. We were there as leftist militants with a specific set of values for our society and our life that tried to contaminate our brains with the ideas, the problems, and the fears of the ordinary people who participated in the, local, in the public assemblies in the squares by thousands and thousands, who resisted to the police repression in an unprecedented way that no organized left force has managed to do in the previous years. But for the positive side of the situation in Greece, I think I will have the chance to speak in the second round. Thanks. Yeah.